we're going to have a session curated by Lakshmi Prasuri from the Inc. Conference in India with three short talks. Please welcome Lakshmi Pratori. Good afternoon. I just want to talk to you about, I call it India and you. And actually to understand India, you need to understand the youth. And the reason is this, just a few numbers for you. 600 million people in India are under the age of 35. And there's about 450,000 engineers that are being graduated every year. There's 30,000 engineering colleges with the plan for another 50,000 being added. And at the same time, India is this, it's a confusing country. You know, I was born there, raised there. I went away to America for almost 25 years, 30 years, and I'm back there for two years. And it's confusing to me. On one hand, it is at the most progressing econ economic, in terms of economy. And at the same time, we are in the bottom 10th on the Human Development Index. If you, the Louis Vuitton shop opened there, stuff selling off the racks. They just can't stock them fast enough. And at the same time, the people who make handicrafts, who make embroideries like this, don't have a way to survive. And people will pay anything to have a foreign brand to be worn. And at the same time, they want something local to be free. You bargain for every 10 rupees with your maid. You bargain with the rickshaw fellow. So to me, it's a very confusing country. But. I just keep going back to it. I moved there two years ago for re only one reason, and that is the youth. Because I remember when I was young, when I lived there, I was always asked why. Why do you question things? Why do you want to step out of the system? Why can't you be like everybody else? Why can't you just you know, study engineering and get a job as an engineer? Why do you need to do this? Why do you need to do that? Why can't you walk? properly like a lady? Why do you want to sit on the scooter with two legs on either side and not like a, a nice demure person? I mean, it's not in my bones to be demure. So it was always, always ask these things. And I would pick fights with people if they did any cat calls. And, my, and you know, I was just frustrated because I came home one day and I told my dad that my teachers are saying, why do you question so much? Why can't you just be like everybody else? And my you know, professors are saying this. So he said, you have only one choice to make. Do you want to be liked by everybody? Or do you want to stand for what you believe in? It's always a choice. Because if you stand for what you believe in, everybody might not like you. And if you want everyone to love you, you have to do what they want you to do, not what you want to do. So there's always a choice to make. And the reason I'm saying all these things is that I made a promise to myself at that time that Someday, I would be there for those young people who felt lonely like I did at that time. I felt angry, I got upset, I felt lonely that what's wrong with me? And at that time, going to America was the best thing I have done. I was 21, I went away to do my master's, and I felt like I've tasted freedom. I was okay to argue, I was, it was actually encouraged to question it was all right to be different. In fact, I was, everybody said, oh, you have such beautiful skin. I was like, wow, it's great to be dark. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm from South India, where the name Lakshmi, it means wealth. And every other person's name is Lakshmi. Literally, the joke is, if there's 10 girls walking down the street, you say Lakshmi, six of them turn back. So I used to hate my name. And I went to Portland, Oregon, which is 92% white people. And they were all like, Lakshmi, what a beautiful name. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I landed up in the right place with the right complexion, with the right name, finally. You know? But that taught me the importance of that accepting environment that allows you to do whatever you wanted to do. So when I, after working, when I decided to come back to India, I decided that I would do a conference. I would do a, create a platform that celebrates people 
who step out of the box. And I want to make them as famous as the people who are already famous. So with that, I want to introduce to you a few people. Um, this is Krishna Patil. She's a mountaineer. She's the youngest woman to climb Mount Everest. And she can't get money to climb it. So her father took a 30 lakh, he's like a $60,000 loan from a bank, which they didn't know how they were going to pay off. She climbed the mountain. And you know what she did? She took with her empty packets of chips and Gatorade and all kinds of things and took a bunch of pictures because she thought, I'll come down and try to sell these photographs to those companies and maybe get some money. She had no idea how she was going to do it. She came back. The bank was so excited, they forgave her entire loan. But to this day, you know, she's finished all the seven uh, uh, continents, mountains, and she wants to do the 14 peaks. Every time she goes on it, it's a, it's a struggle for her. She has no idea how she's going to get the money to climb the next mountain. And, and we adopted her. We help her. And um, the next person, this is Arpit. Who's, uh, who had a great business idea, and he went to one of these mentors and told them, and they called him on his face, you're stupid, you know, just drop this. And he was so upset with it, he went and started the company anyway. It's called Gharpe, and what it is, it's a very simple low tech in terms of if you go to somebody's, uh, if you buy something on e-commerce, you have to put your credit card information. A very small percentage of people in India have credit card information. So just like a PayPal button, there's a Gharpe button when you buy something, and they come to your house and collect the money. That's what his company does. They just got funded recently, become very popular now. This is Charles Ma, who's of Indian Chinese origin. He loves to do Bharatanatyam, but his mother said you should do something in engineering. So he used to practice his dance, and he told his mom he was actually practicing karate when she asked what was all the sound all about. But today, he's a very accomplished dancer. He teaches dance. And uh, Deepak Ravindran, small town Kerala started a company all based on SMS. Today, when you, you can, if you have a question, you go to Google, you go to some other search engine. If you don't have internet, what do you do? So they created a search engine on SMS. You send a question to double five, triple four, and the answer comes to you. They have over a million queries a day on this platform. So finally, Sushant Patnayak, 16-year-old kid who saw a handicapped person and felt that we have to create dignity for the handicapped people. So he actually created this wheelchair that moves by breath. So to, it's like one sniff to go right, two sniffs to go left, and he clues this thing together. And every year he comes with one more invention. And, and all with very, very frugal means. And what gives me great joy is that we get all these people to one place. We give their ideas a space to succeed. I'll come back to you at the end and tell you what are some of the things we find are crucial to make this successful. But I need to let you know, what, how do I know this works? How do I know we take all these individuals? I actually have stopped believing in business plans and a profession and a market analysis, et cetera. I believe in the person. If the person is good and we support them, they end up doing great things. And we invest in them, we work with them solely based on the person. How do I know this works? I just want to wrap up by saying that, you know, we keep talking about professional, we keep talking about business, but it's really very personal. And in India, I've learned you've got to be patient, very patient, but the promise is amazing. And I just want to leave you with this picture because there are times I wake up in the middle of the night and I wonder, is all this worth it? Is all this craziness worth it? And I think of her, I call her my flower girl. And uh, you know, when we did our conference, uh, we had a woman called Sunita Krishnan who spoke on our stage. And she rescues women out of prostitution. She gives them a home. And she talked about how difficult it is to have a permanent home because nobody wants her living in their neighborhood. And we actually worked with her and raised the money she needed. And 18 months from the time she spoke on the stage, she had a three-acre campus ready and 600 women living there right now. And um, this is a girl, my flower girl, who I met her in, uh, in Sunita's campus. And she was six years old, uh, no, seven years old when she was sold into prostitution. And she's mentally disturbed. So by the time they found her, she's already been in, been in the institution for about two and a half years. 
she already was infected with HIV, she was HIV positive. They brought her to their home and, you know, and uh, took care of her and they felt that she should probably be in an institution that will help her. And they found one of the best institutions and kept her there. And then two years later, they found out that that institution resold her into prostitution. So they brought her back, and two years ago for Christmas Eve, they just moved in, were moving into the new facility. I met her, and she's my favorite one um, over there. Uh, she doesn't like taking pictures, but she posed for me, and uh, um, we had a great chat, and I found out that she moved into the new home. She loved it and a year later she died. And whenever I wonder, is it really worth it what we are doing, you know, giving places to these voices and doing these crazy things when you should be working somewhere else and making some money, I really think of her and feel that if everything we did gave a home, a wonderful place for someone like for one day, it's worth what we are doing. Because I love the quote that to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. And for us at Ink Talks, our goal is we want to be the world to that one person and give them the stage, give them the voice, and give them the presence so they can make a difference because any one of us can't do it. So we welcome you to join us in Kochi next year. Go to inktalks.com and here is to that one, the person to whom all of you can be the world. Thank you.